Well I suppose you're all wondering what happened to that uh, jigsaw puzzle that I received. I did get to the end of that in the fullness of time. It wasn't as easy as I expected. I had foolishly hoped that whoever had tackled it had simply been a little bit incompetent and perhaps a bit lazy and had given up too easily. But that wasn't to be. Now we have a proper functioning camera again. Everything runs nice and smooth. But the road to this point was anything but smooth. So I'll tell you more about what I discovered. OK, I've got a container of parts I needed to replace. As I'd said earlier when I was looking at the camera, that everything basically seemed to be present and correct. That wasn't entirely true when I got to the details, but it was pretty close. The shutter did work. The film advance did work. The uh, transfer shaft cam, that was all there, had all its teeth, looked like it should all couple up. But it wouldn't go. And the reason it wouldn't go was fairly simple. These two arms here and that bracket that holds them in place are used to control the action of the mirror and the capping plate. And basically the cam revolves, presses on the top here, pops, pushes these things down and the lever on here and on here shut the capping plate down and push the mirror down to latch it into position. And of course once the pressure of the cam is off these they should just pop back up out of the way and uh, allow the actions to take place that need to take place. But what had happened was that these had been bent at some stage and you can probably see bright lines across there, they are high points I can see a sharp mark there, somebody's had these in pliers, so someone's had a go at straightening them out. There were more marks on the back. These I have rubbed down on a bit of uh, fine uh, emery paper, and uh, so that the high points show up quite clearly. But you can see some quite sharp lines there where they've been bent. I had a very good go at straightening these out. Not only were they bent, in this plane, I also had a twist to them. And whatever I did, there was no way I could get them to move smoothly in this guide. If you look at the guide there, you can see that that brass has been rubbed through. The, uh, the blackening has been rubbed through. And that's not as smooth as it should be by any means. But these components would not move smoothly through that position and I was forced to find some replacement parts which I hate doing, I hate using new, all my parts up, they're hard to come by. So that was the, the main secret for why the camera wouldn't work was that. Basically the mirror and the capping plate wouldn't function correctly, wouldn't uh, you could set they, the mechanism could be got to set them in position, push them down into position but because the this one in particular would stay stuck down instead of bouncing back up on its spring. Nothing would work correctly. So that was the problem. And I can see that someone had tried valiantly to get these things straight, or at least do something to them before I'd got there. This honestly looked like somebody had pushed, put a screwdriver behind it and given it a wee twist. But that was the main problem with those bits. So I wasn't extra pleased about that. This little piece, that's driven by a little gear. Now that little piece there, that little cam, its job is to open the shutter blades as you cock the shutter. Just as the shutter is just about to be fully cocked, this picks up the, an arm on the shutter and opens the blades to allow viewing. Well this was unfortunately worn, so that the little not teeth, there's two little tabs on this gear that engage with this surface and 
basically they were rounded off. <coughs> so as you cock the shutter, the gear would tend to keep rotating. The plate would just disengage from it because it's only under spring tension holding the two together and then the shutter wouldn't work. So it would work once or twice then it would cease to function. So that was a minor annoyance and had to be replaced. These are components, the design of these components changed over time through the manufacturing of the Reflex S. So these were fairly early, I think there's about three generations this would be the second generation and probably the most common. This little item. This is the flash sink wiring that ran from at the back of the shutter mechanism. And I think I made mention that this thing had was unsoldered, which was unusual, and I made a note of that. At this end, it's been filled up with glue. Well these switches Here's a brand new one. These switches are very, very weak. There's hardly any plastic here at all. And the plastic with age, it tends to crack. So the best way to fix these things, if that plastic is cracked, then situation is you, these have got wires soldered to them like this, of course, is you put a little blob of araldite, epoxy resin down behind it. And you just want it to hold. You fix it at this end and that's all, all you need to do. If you fix it further down the shaft, you affect the flexibility of this. And so that the switch is, becomes inflexible and therefore doesn't work. And what had happened here is that somebody had glued that up and in pretty much in the approved fashion. But looking closely, I could see that this contact at the bottom was soldered, it was laminated. So the original contact exists at the top here, about half the length, and then this piece has been soldered over the top of it. And what that has done is it's made this unusually stiff. Now, why should that be a problem? When the capping plate rises in the as the shutter's released, mirror comes up, capping plate rises and it, the capping plate as it hits up it hits this contact here closing the flash circuit so that the flash is then enabled to go. The flash doesn't fire yet but it means that that part of the circuit is closed. Because this is extra stiff it means that the capping plate doesn't come up with sufficient force to shift the cam and allow, allow the action to continue so the shutter wouldn't fire reliably. And this was the fault. So that had to be replaced. I was going to replace it with that new switch but I would have to have soldered the wires onto it and then I would have had to put the glue in place anyway because the plastic is pretty dodgy being 50 years old. I chose instead to take these whole pieces cables from a parts camera and use that instead. And looking at the state of this, and looking at the fact that that wire had been unsoldered where I didn't expect it to be unsoldered, I think that very likely whoever had been in there last had put these in. He probably had even a worse problem ahead of them and he had taken these from some parts camera and put them in. So that was the problem with that. Now I wasn't extra pleased to find that, but it was good to get the problem out of the way. Now, I know whoever was working on it had a parts camera, because there were spare parts. That one doesn't even belong. That screw may or may not have come from a Reflex S, and if it did, it would have been one that held that contact in place, or it's come from a Reflex 3. A spare chrome screw, that would have been holding the end of the top plate, the top cover. There's a spare of that. There's another chrome screw there that also would have held the top cover of a camera. And then we've got a couple of the plain screws as would normally be holding either the back onto the body or the base trim onto the body. 
and another one there. And to top it off, a spare dished washer. Now these spring washers, there are 12 of them typically, three in each of the four positions, and they're sprung loaded, and you use them to be able to set the distance of the film plane from the lens mount. There's a spare. So there are a few bits and pieces there. There are a few other things I'd sort of, well, minor nuisances I discovered, but nothing worse than usual. But when I came to reassemble the shutter, I was really puzzled. Here's the shutter speed setting ring, and I dropped it into position. The base of the camera would be here, the top of the camera would be here. This is the way it would go up. And I thought that, that, that looks good. I put it on the camera, and I put it on there, and when I turned the camera up to look at it, there were no shutter speeds on the top of the ring. And I thought, well, what's gone on there? Has somebody wiped out it with solvent or something and taken all the paint away? But on the other face of the shutter ring, it's got the shutter speeds. Now, that didn't come off any Kodak Retina. It may have come off a Bessomatic or something of that nature. It should have looked like this. You can see the teeth there, where it engages. Should have sat like that. But this is the correct one. Shutter speeds at the top. And this is what was with the camera. Shutter speeds at the bottom. So, that was an extra puzzle. So having said all that, I did get the thing to go in the end, but it took a lot of mucking around. These parts had been obviously adjusted, would be a polite way of saying it, and other things had been adjusted too, and you only discovered they'd been adjusted when you couldn't get the thing to work correctly. So this, there was a little few things needed straightening out that were bent, and a few th things needed bending that was straight, but at the end of the day, we have a camera that functions again. But that shutter speed ring, that one really puzzled me. I wondered what had happened to that. So there you go. That's what can happen with a jigsaw puzzle. And this camera, of course, that can go off to its owner now, and I'm sure they'll be pleased to see it. Thanks for watching. I forgot to mention one last thing about this camera. I had said that all the parts seemed to be present and correct. Well, mostly they were, but there was no rewind knob with the camera. So I had to replace the rewind knob with one from my spares. So that's the last puzzle. Um, but at least now it's a good going camera.